Three days before the birth of her child, Skylar sends her mother a message saying, Bossed up with 300 calories on the treadmill, which was pretty good for how I'm feeling. Couldn't get a picture to show off because was talking to Linwood, lol, but I'm headed home. The next day her mum said, you look amazing. So this is two days before her daughter's born and Skylar has just had some validation from her mum, you look amazing. So now she's on a high, you know, she's got this, she's got this validation from her mum, which is, which is really what's going to end up being her own narcissistic supply because she's developing into a covert narcissist, somebody who, um, who uh, tries to please everyone and yet doesn't have access to her own feelings. So she'll lack empathy herself because she's so used to trying to conform to what somebody else wants her to be in order to feel um, validated, you know, in order to feel like she's okay. So, uh, so, she, so she's, she's replied to her mum saying, thanks so much, I feel amazing. And, um, and who knows if she actually does feel amazing. She, she probably doesn't because this is two days before her baby's born. And I think at that time she was in emotional turmoil. But she, she just behaves um, in the way that she, she knows her mother wants her to behave. So by saying that she feels amazing, that's what her mum wants her to feel. That, you know, I'm doing what you've asked me to do and I feel great doing it because we have the same values and we are one. Labor for almost 36 hours. Her daughter's birth is now imminent and still nothing. She chooses to remain silent. In the early morning hours of May 7, 2017, Brooke Richardson gave birth to her daughter alone in her bedroom. Her daughter is born into this world, still nothing. She doesn't ask for help. She doesn't seek emergency assistance, medical assistance. She doesn't get her daughter to the hospital, nothing. Rather, she buries her in the backyard and disposes of her remains and all evidence of her daughter's birth. Her reaction to her daughter's death, to her mom, OMG, to Brandon, I'm happy. And then off to the gym she goes to further erase any evidence of her daughter's existence. So shortly after burying her daughter, Skylar sends her mum this message. I'm literally speechless with how happy I am. My belly is back. OMG, I never, ever, ever, ever am letting it get like this again. You're about to see me look freaking better than before. OMG. You can see from these messages that Skylar doesn't have any empathy for her baby. Her baby's just died and she doesn't feel at all upset about it. She only feels happy. And, and this, I believe, is more evidence that she has split off from herself and she identifies with her mask. You know, she, she's just so excited that her mask is succeeding because she's achieved this, this desired weight. And, and that's all she cares about. I think she would have been immensely relieved to have her body back again. That baby would have been seen as the enemy. It was something that was coming between her and her mum's love, you know, as she, as she would have seen it. And, uh, and as soon as that baby was gone, it meant that she was back in control of getting the most validation that she'd learned how to get from her mum. Kim replies, that's what I'm talking about. Way to be, great attitude, it paid off. I am so, so proud. You will look amazing at school tomorrow. So this is the prize that Skylar gets after her baby is dead and buried. She gets her mum saying that she's so, so proud of her. You know, and and she and every sentence is 
positive validation that she's getting from her mum. And Skylar then sends another message to her mum the same day that her daughter was buried, saying, I'm literally so excited now just for dinner to wear something cute. Yay! My belly is back now. I'm taking this opportunity to make it amazing. And her mum says, yes! Her mum saying yes is, um, you know, is the validation that she's getting for having lost the weight and, and in reality having lost the baby. You know, now her mum is pleased with her and that's what matters to Skylar. And on the same day that she's given birth and buried her daughter, she says, boss mode wasn't on full blast today because of my pain but you best believe it's about to be all week i hit that treadmill for 200 cows then abs and i could i couldn't stop looking at myself in the mirror after lol so although it sounds like she's really full of herself and she thinks she's amazing really what she's doing is she's being a cheerleader for her mum for what her mum wants so she's saying you, you know you best believe this because that's what she knows her mum wants to hear and she's putting on this light-hearted vibe of lol you know that um yeah she had some pain today but but you best believe that all week this is what i'm going to be doing she's um she's trying to get her mum excited because if her mum's excited then her mum is really pleased with her and she's doing this despite whatever she's going through and and I and I don't imagine that what she's going through is um is feeling a lot of remorse for what she's done if she's done something or um or for feeling really sad that she's lost the baby. I don't actually think that's what she's going through, but she will have been through a lot emotionally and physically nevertheless to have given birth all on her own and to have buried a baby. I mean, it would have been quite a frightening thing to do. So, um, so I don't think she would be in the light-hearted frame of mind she's trying to come across as to her mum. But again, if her mum doesn't care about how she feels, then the kind of daughter she wants is one who's really easy, you know, easy to manage, someone who doesn't have um, feelings that she has to bother with, a happy daughter who's nice and thin and doing everything she can to stay thin and to get thinner. And so that's who her daughter is being. And here's another example of Kim referring to herself accidentally instead of her daughter. You easily can, see? I knew you had it in you. But I need to keep on the Dolkalax and all that too. You will rock Destin next month. She meant you need to keep on it, but she said I do. And her daughter says, I still am and will definitely. And yes, I look really good. Wait till you see my belly today. It look even better now. I just got to tone up. And now she does it again over two messages. She's now twice referred to herself accidentally instead of her daughter. Here she says, dang, you know, your muscles are still there so I can get them back really quick. Trust me, I'm so excited for you. I have no idea. Not you have no idea how excited I am for you. I have no idea. And your muscles are still there so I can get them back instead of you can get them back. And Skylar replies, definitely, I can easily tone my belly and legs super quick. It makes me super excited. Not sure if you got my pick, but crushed it on the treadmill. Two miles and 300 cows, then did legs and abs and even used some machines. So yeah, I am a BAB. No, I didn't get it, but yay, you wrote book on BAB. You should come too if you're up for it. You can see how great I look in all the dresses. Girl, you are so killing it. I swear it made me so happy and in a good mood knowing you look so great. Literally, me too. Like, I just want to constantly show off all the time and keep looking better and better. I have so much potential right now to sculpt my body. That is so true. 
you can feel from these messages the pressure that she's under to keep her mum happy and how hard it is. You know, she says, Skylar says, thanks so much. I'm glad you are so happy because so am I. And I love when everyone is happy. Woo hoo. It, it feels like, oh, my mum's happy with me. And that's not easy. Oh, I'm so, and, and you can feel how high she is that her mum is actually happy with her. And Kim replies, me too, it's been a long time. And then Skylar says, we're keeping this happiness up though. And Kim replies, yes, we are. So, you know, they both have to be happy together. One, one is not going to be happy unless the other is. And that will be Skylar. Skylar's not going to be happy unless her mum is. And then Skylar says, I'm happy and loving shopping now that I look so good. Lol, I'm ecstatic. Are you okay? And that's her asking for validation again. And her mum says, I'm ecstatic because you will look like this when I wake up tomorrow. You will be happy and look great. And it makes me so super happy. She does mention her daughter being happy, but it's stuffed in between her saying twice what her daughter will look like. That her daughter will look like that when she wakes up and that she'll look great. So I think the message to Skylar is coming loud and clear that her mother will be happy because of how she looks. And Skylar replies, yes, I love getting myself back in shape. It's so exciting. And her mum replies, I'm excited for you and I have not been excited in forever. Skylar says, yes, same, I'm pumped. It makes me happy knowing you're excited. Kim says, I truly am. So, you know, you can see this, this really codependent relationship where Skylar's always trying to make her mum happy and it's clearly not an easy feat, you know. Kim has made it clear that she hasn't felt like this in a long time and presumably that's because Skylar had put on a little bit of weight. You know, and so her mum's mood had therefore dropped for months, you know, from presumably um, through Skylar's pregnancy. And if you look at these messages that just go on and on, Skylar saying, yay, good. And then she's and then she's back to talking about another workout that she's going to be doing. And Kim is so happy and she's talking again about how she's going to look in her clothes, you know, and... Um, and then she says that Brandon's mum says she lost weight and, um, and, and you know, and, and she wants to show off all the time. And, and Kim loves that. You can do that every day. Keep it up. And, and it just carries on. She's so excited about how she looks, you know, and, um, and, and, and they, just, they just never get sick of talking about it. Skylar says that she's going to a boot camp. Maybe this is some kind of fitness boot camp that she's going to. So she's, she sends her mum a link to that, you know, to get more validation from her mum. And, uh, and then she says, I feel awesome. That was so great. I'm so happy and proud. First thing Linwood said to me was, wow, you look great. How much weight have you lost? And it made me feel so incredibly proud to say 20 pounds. And then he announced to the whole class and everyone clapped and cheered for me. It made me feel so good. And Kim says, I could cry. You're literally my hero. And then Skylar says, thanks so much. I feel awesome. I'm headed home. And Kim says, you are awesome. So her mother feeling so emotional that she says she could cry, talking about her daughter as being her hero. This is the most positive validation that Skylar can get from her mum. You know, it's, it's the peak of admiration that her mum is showing her right now. And so this is the wonderful prize that she gets for her baby now being dead and under the ground. If, if this hadn't been the case, if she told her mother that she was pregnant, she would have had the other response. Your life is over. It's the end of your life, you know. Skylar would have been of no use to her mother. 
she wouldn't have made her look good she wouldn't have wanted to show her off anymore so her her value would have completely dropped she wouldn't have got the the closest thing that she can get to love from her mother now she's got that she's got the whole class clapping about something that her mother really approves of. So not only does she have that moment where the class thinks that she's amazing and that will feel like narcissistic supply to her, and not only do the class clap, but she gets to tell her mum that they clapped. So she gets even more positive validation from her mum. And because her mum is so preoccupied with outward appearances and what other people think, then hearing that the class clapped for Skylar, whether that's even true or not, you know, that then makes her mum um, even more happy with Skylar, you know, and really, really proud. Skylar compares her weight when she was first prescribed the contraceptive pill with um, not long after her baby daughter had been born um, and was buried. Okay, thanks. You know what's crazy? When I went to gyno on April 25th, I was 149 pounds and today on May the 18th, I weigh 119 pounds. That's literally 30 pounds gone. Ironically, her mother says, you are so happy now, that's all I ever want for you. But the reason she's so happy is because her mum is happy with her. And I think to do that in order to get validation from her mother shows um, really just how damaged she is, just how completely lacking in empathy she is. If she did kill her daughter from this message, you can see she doesn't have remorse. She doesn't have empathy. She doesn't have feelings towards her baby, about what her baby might have gone through, you know, um, about the loss of her baby. All of that is utterly irrelevant. And all that matters is that she's now being admired by her mother. Um, and she'll she'll celebrate the death of her daughter because it means that she got her mother's approval. Two months later, Brooke's perfect crime begins to unravel. July 12th, she returns to Hilltop OBGYN, but this time she sees a different doctor. However, what Brooke doesn't know is that Dr. Andrew has already told Dr. Boyce about the prior appointment. And so Dr. Boyce confronts Brooke. Where is your baby? What happened to the pregnancy? She burst into tears. She says, I had her. I buried her in the backyard. And she claims she was stillborn. You are now aware that as a result of that disclosure, the sheriff's office was contacted. They started an investigation. And as a result of their investigation, Brooke's daughter her skeletal remains, all that was left of her, was found in the backyard in the tree line of the Richardson home. Okay. Um, did you think about telling anyone at that time, or were you still pretty sure? I don't know. Tell my mom. I should have told my mom. You thought about it? Yeah. I was really sorry. I didn't know it was over. Okay. Well, it, it's okay. I mean, no one. Again, we're not, no one can judge, you know, what you did at, at that time. You know, we weren't, we weren't going through what you, what you went through at all, you know. So I can't say you definitely should have told your mom, you know, because I, I wasn't going through it. So. Why can't they just believe me? Because you didn't do things normal people would do. We should have gone to the hospital. So therefore, you lied to us. You buried a baby in the backyard. That's why they don't believe you. Because nothing you did makes any sense. That's the thing that's across the board causing problems. I mean. You guys always love me. I 
can we love you? Do you believe me? And how, how do we know if we can believe you? Look at how much you've lied to us. Look, I understand you're sorry. I understand you didn't mean it. But you've got to understand this is the single worst possible scenario you could possibly have put us in. I know. I'm sorry. I love you guys. I mean, we love you too, but it's got us in a really bad, bad spot right now. I don't even know what to do. With my own baby, I would never try and hurt it. Unfortunately, I mean, it's happened before. I know. And of course, you turned 18 right then and there, so you're an adult. You're talking about women's prison, Skylar. We're not talking. All right, let's don't talk about that. It's bad enough as it is. Even if she doesn't go, but how more they do they act by this take me away. Honey, stop. You have to be prepared for that. I am gonna take me away. No, let's not go there yet. I'm sorry. Mommy. Well, you're still our daughter. Just please pay, be patient with us, because this is a shock, okay? I know, I know. She provides alternate explanations for everything she thinks the evidence is going to show. She joins a truth, how the baby died, with a fiction, an accident. I think I might have killed her when I squeezed her. Suffocation. She was born in the toilet, drowning. How far down would you, like if you could even guess, do this, would you say you dug this far, this far, this far, maybe only that far? I've covered her though. Was she... So you dig a hole, you dig a small hole. Um, did you place her in the hole? Okay. Was she still in the towel? No, I took her out of the towel. You took her out of the towel. Um, did you lay anything down there in the dirt, or was it just the dirt? It's just her. The state submits to you that it is clear from all of the defendant's statements and actions in this case that the defendant never had any intention of having her daughter. As Mr. Knippen told you in the second opening, the decision on Brooke's daughter's life was made before her child was ever born. She was never going to see the light of day. On May 7, 2017, Brooke Richardson purposely killed her daughter, destroyed all evidence of her existence, 
and went on with her perfect life as if nothing had ever happened. I hope my promise to my sister will be safe. Now we have a perfect life. <laughs> that was her perfect life, ladies and gentlemen. Baby Richardson never fit into that equation. You have now had an opportunity to hear all of the evidence. Employ your reason and your common sense. Draw logical conclusions from the evidence and find Brooke Richardson guilty. For the death of her daughter. Thank you.